the African continent. A land of breathtaking diversity and untamed beauty. A place where each sunrise heralds tales of survival. Where every creature, no matter how small or large, plays a vital part in our story here on Earth. Beneath its radiant skies and amidst the dance of its diverse inhabitants, a grand spectacle unfolds. It is a tale as old as time itself, intricately woven into the very fabric of the earth. The Circle of Life In the grand theatre of the African wilderness, Every creature, from the mighty lion to the humble dung beetle, performs a crucial role, contributing to a beautifully complex balance that allows all to flourish, even in the harshest of environments. Africa is a mirror reflecting our inherent interconnectedness with nature. By understanding it, we learn more about our place in the world our relationships with other living beings, and how our actions can impact the delicate balance that sustains us all. Let us embark on a voyage of discovery and learn from the wisdom of the wild. Our story begins in the heart of the vast plains of the Serengeti. The sun crests the horizon, casting long shadows over the landscape. The air hums with energy. The distant rumbling of hooves sets the tone for the spectacle to come. Beginning their migration is the mysterious and unique species known as the wildebeest. Driven by one thing, survival. Each year, an astounding 1.3 million wildebeest begin the 600 kilometer trip, a call of evolutionary destiny. They seek the green grasses that accompany seasonal rains, green grasses that await them in Kenya. Being herbivores, the wildebeests are tied to the fresh grasses that feed them. The herd, as a collective, consumes nearly 5,000 tons of it per day. But the green grass itself is tied to the rains that water it. And when the rains move, the wildebeests must follow. This journey comes with no promises. The herd faces constant threat from carnivorous cheetahs lying in wait for the perfect moment to strike. Survival for the wildebeest is a numbers game. Sheer numbers and will determine who lives and dies on these planes. On this day in particular, the herd marches forward unharmed. The cheetah, hoping for a quick meal, is unable to strike its prey down. Soaking away in defeat, it nurses an injury to its back leg. But the cheetahs are not the wildebeest's only threat.
In between the herd and their feast lies their toughest challenge yet. The Mara River. The 245 mile long Mara River permeates through East Africa. It has been given the nickname, the River of Death, and for good reason. The first of the herd arrives at the Mara's edge, deserving of a much needed drink. Their eyes reflecting a mix of determination and fear. Their objective, to reach the verdant pastures on the other side of the river. But the Mara is not just a body of water. It's a gauntlet filled with threats. The most immediate of these threats lurk just beneath the surface. Eyes just breaking the water. The Nile Crocodile. Measuring up to 20 feet in length, the Nile crocodiles find it rather easy taking down a fully grown wildebeest. For now, they lie in wait. As the wildebeest determine the perfect moment to enter the water, the tension is palpable. Each step stirs the muddy riverbed, each ripple a potential herald of danger. Suddenly, the first wildebeest leaps into the water, now in a race to reach the other side of the river. Chaos. Thousands of animals follow suit. It's now or never. The commotion sounds a dinner bell for the crocodiles as they begin to rush to the sea, attacking the vulnerable animals. Driven by the same forces that drive the wildebeest to cross, hunger and destiny. Many of the wildebeest do not survive the swim, the crocodile's jaws pulling them under to be drowned. A good meal for a crocodile may come once every few weeks or even months. For the hungriest amongst them, a meal does not come much easier than this. Amidst the chaos, a young wildebeest falters. In the blink of an eye, the crocodile seizes its opportunity and the river turns a shade darker. The river of death has yet again claimed another. It's a stark reminder of the fine line between life and death in this wild paradise. Nearly 7,000 wildebeest die every year crossing the Mara, providing food for downriver species. As more of them cross, carcasses begin to collect in the river. This scene of turmoil is a critical event in the Mara. But for every wildebeest that is lost, another is saved. Many wildebeest, by every stroke of luck, manage to evade the crocodile's jaws. Their figures emerge on the far bank of the river. Drenched and shaken, but alive. The ebb and flow of existence is the rhythm of the Mara a dance choreographed by the forces of nature. Each participant, be it the migrating wildebeest or the patient crocodile, maintains the harmony of this ecosystem. For much of the herd, the ordeal is over. 
but for some, still more threats lie ahead. An estimated one out of every five wildebeests do not survive the migration. Those who evade the predators fall prey to exhaustion, hunger and thirst. On this clockwise migration in search of food, the biological clock of the wildebeest is constantly ticking. Many mothers lose their offspring. Many offspring lose their mothers. The unforgiving African sun casts long shadows across the plains of the Mara. The air is thick with dust and the tense residue of a trek fraught with danger. But there's an air of relief too for the surviving wildebeests have made it. They have reached their seasonal feeding grounds. As the mighty herd grazes, their movement, almost in unison, creates an ethereal ballet on the plains. It is an extraordinary sight. A testament to their resilience, their instinctual drive to survive and thrive. Energy is the currency of life on these plains. Every creature, from the towering giraffe to the tiniest insect, has a role in the flow of this natural equilibrium. It is a flow of energy that begins with the sun, the lush grass fed by its rays and the wildebeests that consume this reward. The energy doesn't stop there. It cascades down, making its way into the smallest corners of this ecosystem. For even in the wake of the mighty wildebeest, tiny worlds flourish. This is where our pair of dung beetles enter the story. The dung beetles, small but mighty, are the unsung heroes of the African plains. They are essentially Africa's clean-up crew. And the wildebeests, well, they provide the bounty for this tireless workforce. Dung. Dung is the solid waste produced by animals after they've processed their food. The beetles toil away, fashioning the nutrient-rich dung into perfect spheres to be moved. It's an incredible sight. These tiny architects moving loads many times their weight. They roll their precious cargo away, disappearing into tiny burrows in the earth. Their labor serves a dual purpose. Not only do they gain sustenance and a nesting ground, but they also enrich the soil, returning nutrients that promote the growth of the grassy plains. It's a perfect testament to nature's ingenious design. The sturdy build of the dung beetle allows it to move balls of dung up to 1,200 times its own weight, which would make it both the world's strongest insect and the world's strongest animal. And it's not just brute strength that makes these creatures marvelous. They have the brains to show it as well. The dung beetle, using its own eyes, is known to use the Milky Way and its features to navigate through the night. Even when artificial light affects their habitat, they have demonstrated the ability to isolate the polarized light of the moon. They are one of the very few species that have shown the ability to navigate celestially. Though often overlooked, the dung beetle is as critical to the African ecosystem as the majestic wildebeest. They ensure the flow of energy continues. As the sun dips below the horizon, a spectacular transformation sweeps across the African plains. The vivid colors of the day give way to a canvas of shimmering stars. Night descends, and with it, 
emerges a different set of characters. Lions. The nocturnal kings of the plains rise from their daytime slumber. Their golden eyes reflect the faint moonlight, signaling a shift in power. It's their time now, their realm. The rhythm of the night pulses with a different kind of energy. The apex predators, lions have mastered the efficient use of energy. They embody a contrasting tempo to the ceaseless migration of wildebeests or the diligent work of the dung beetles. Their lives are punctuated by bursts of intense activity, followed by long periods of rest. As darkness blankets the savannah, a family unit of lions, known as a pride, begins its nightly patrol. The females, the primary hunters, work together with precision and teamwork, embodying a stark example of nature's paradox. Ruthless, yet nurturing. Fierce, yet protective. The darkness hides the lions, making them virtually invisible to their prey. Visible to us only through high-tech night vision cameras. Their strategy is one of patience and precision. They stalk their target, moving with a stealth and silence that belies their powerful frames. As dawn nears, the pride makes its way back to their resting grounds, their bellies full. Another day of rest is well deserved. It's a different kind of satisfaction, a different kind of survival but it's survival nonetheless. We move from the grassy plains northwards to a vastly different landscape, the immense, harsh Sahara. Here, life seems implausible. Yet, like the lions that have adapted to conquer the night, Another species has evolved to master this seemingly inhospitable environment. The camel. The camel, an emblem of endurance and resilience, is a living testament to nature's innovative adaptability. Mirroring the lion's mastery over nocturnal hunting, the camel's unique physiological traits have empowered it to withstand the brutal desert conditions. A camel's hump, a reservoir of fat, is an extraordinary adaptation for energy preservation and sustenance during prolonged periods without food or water. In the same vein as the lion's proficient energy management, the camel reigns supreme in the arid desert landscape. Camels traverse the barren expanse, their strides a graceful ballet carved into the dunes. Despite the rugged surroundings, they embody a serene rhythm of continuance that resonates with the desert's profound silence. In the Sahara, living demands resourcefulness. Analogous to the lion's evolution to blend with the night, the camel has developed traits to combat extreme desert conditions. Broad, flat feet resist sinking into the sand. Lengthy eyelashes shield against dust and sandstorms, and their unique ability to seal their nostrils equips them for sand-laden winds. Each attribute is a testament to the camel's endurance and the tenacity in adversity. But their story is not solely one of individual survival. The camels have become vital companions to humans, helping us traverse and inhabit these vast desert landscapes. For centuries, they have carried goods and people across the Sahara, making human civilization possible in this arid wilderness. In this way, camels have not just conquered the desert, they have allowed us to do the same. This adaptability, this relentless will to survive and thrive, 
underscores the true essence of Africa. Each tale we unveil, each creature we encounter, is a testament to her beauty. A testament that will carry us forward on our extraordinary mission. As we venture from the heartland of Africa, we find ourselves on the edge of the continent, in Namibia. Here, the desert meets the sea in a dramatic clash of contrasts. Welcome to the Skeleton Coast, a punishing landscape known for its vast sandscapes and striking shipwrecks. But here, in a cove along the coast, Fur seals find solace from the desert's punishing heat. Their playful banter and distinct barking create a lively symphony against the backdrop of crashing waves and rustling sand dunes. Their playground, the South Atlantic, boasts cold temperatures year-round, and the seals counteract this with heavy fat reserves for warmth. However, these fat reserves also make them prize energy sources, to one of planet Earth's apex predators. The Great White Shark. Attacking from behind and below, Great Whites are on a constant lookout for seals. Their keen senses can detect a colony of seals from two miles away. Masters of the ambush, these creatures are built to attack. But the seals, with their sleek bodies and nimble movements, are built to evade. Their acrobatic twists and dives in the water serve not only as spirited antics, but also as survival skills. 
helping them evade the lightning-fast strikes of the Great Whites. However, it's not only natural predators that these seals need to contend with. Human activity, notably overfishing and pollution, are adding new challenges to their fight for their lives. Depleted fish stocks mean longer foraging trips for the seals, increasing their exposure to shark attacks and leaving young pups vulnerable on the shore. They've gained the nickname Dogs of the Sea for a number of reasons. Their colonies demonstrate complex society and a unique social structure of males fighting for dominance. They help regulate fish populations and, in turn, are a significant food source for the sharks. Their fate is intrinsically tied to the health and balance of their environment. For the newborn seals, a life of near misses and constant calamity faces them. But for now, the future of the pod looks to be all right. From the windswept dunes of Namibia's skeleton coast, we embark on the final leg of our story. A story that brings us full circle. Back to the one species that has the potential to either disrupt or protect Africa's web of creation. Humans. Human footprints are everywhere in Africa. From the coastal towns of Namibia to the heartland of the Mara. From the bustling cities to the remote rural communities. We are as much a part of Africa as the wildebeests, fur seals or great white sharks. Every corner of the world affects Africa. Each decision, each resource we consume, each footprint we leave reaches across oceans to this ancient land. Research shows that human involvement has already damaged grazing lands of the wildebeest. Some of the herd can now be observed migrating south instead of north to Kenya. There are no longer promised foods north of the Mara. Erratic weather patterns linked to human activity have sent much of their migration route into deep drought. Other studies show our farming chemicals have a drastic effect on dung beetles even outside of intended habitats. And in return, a noticeable decrease in species richness. Our desire for the rarest of meats has put the magnificent mountain gorilla in the crosshairs of extinction. And our knack for overfishing entire coastlines may one day see the disappearance of entire species, like the Cape fur seal or the great white shark. And we must ask, what could our own destructive behaviours do to our own species? At what point have we gone too far? Whether through pollution from far-off industries or habitat destruction driven by foreign demand for wood and metals, our collective actions shape the course for the future of all of us, human and animal alike. The savannah the jungles, the desert, the rivers, the vast array of species that call these habitats home, they are not isolated. They are part of a worldwide web of cause and effect, influenced by forces in all directions. Yet, it's within our power to make a difference, to choose between a path of exploitation or coexistence. Africa is a land of abundant resources, but it is also an interwoven system of life that requires respect and careful stewardship. This land has a bright future. A future where humanity can thrive alongside the wildebeests on the plains, the fur seals on the coast, and the gorillas in the jungles. A future where our footprint does not mean destruction, but harmony, where our choices support balance rather than disrupt it. Our trip through Africa has shown us the entangled relationships, the interconnectedness that binds every creature. 
We've seen strength and resilience in the face of adversity. We've seen the delicate balance that allows such diversity to flourish. Now, as we stand at the crossroads, it's up to us to decide the road we will take. Will we be the guardians or will we be the disruptors? The choices we make today will shape the Africa of tomorrow. The legacy we leave behind will be written in the sands of the Namib Desert, in the waters of the Mara River, in the jungles of Uganda, and in the lives of every creature that calls Africa home. This story is not just a testament to the power and resilience of nature, it's a call to action. It is an invitation for us to be better, to do better, for ourselves and for the countless species that share this incredible planet with us. As the sun sets on our journey, let's not forget that every sunset in Africa is a promise of a new dawn. A dawn where humanity and nature thrive in harmony. Where the circle of life continues, unbroken, in all its wild majesty.